In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make an Arduino like circuit on a breadboard. The reason for doing this is going to be for educational purposes, but you could take this circuit on further and various reasons why you might want to create a different circuit, perhaps adding additional functionality onto a single board or making it fit into a certain case size or something like that. Throughout this video, I'll be using shrimping kits as they provided the parts that I needed to create the Arduino-like circuit. Unfortunately, they no longer provide the kits, uh, but you can source all the components yourself and I'll provide details of the components you'd need to buy on my website. The shrimping website is still up, but I don't recommend you try and buy anything from it as they no longer stock those but it's still a good resource for details of the circuits and the GitHub site still has the source code available so that you can still follow along with all the projects. This is a simple kit that gives you the basics you need to create a 80 mega 3 to 8 base circuit, the same as a, a standard Arduino Uno, just concentrating on the core parts. So shrimping, this is the, it's called the shrimp parts kit and it also includes the blink project. So this is all in one. You start off by building the blink, which is the bare minimum you need to get a 80 mega 3 to 8 circuit working. And then it's got the other parts to make it a bit more stable with some additional capacitors and this switch and other features of the Arduino. Now as well as this you're going to need the breadboard to make it on. So here's uh, sort of recommended is the 400 hole standard breadboard. The other thing you need for programming the AT Mega chip is a UART. This is a USB UART based around the CP2102 integrated circuit. This is, they do their own version of this, but this is just one I bought direct. I think it's from Amazon or somewhere quite cheaply. I did have various other UART devices, but even the ones with the same chip that's on the Arduino, ironically enough, didn't work. Whereas this one worked straight away. I might try and have a look and see why they were not working, but uh, I do recommend you get the CP2102 based UART to avoid any problems with that. So that's the minimum, but then you can buy other add-on packs. For instance, this is the conductive keyboard add-on. It uses the same shrimp kit, the shrimp parts as the minimum, and then adds the other components in this case, it's got some additional resistors and um, got some diodes and some conductive uh, metal strips that you use to make this uh, conduct use a, a conductive keyboard. I'm so I'm going to use those, but I'm going to just at the moment concentrate on the basic Arduino-like circuit but I'm going to build this on a much bigger breadboard. Perhaps overkill, but it gives me plenty of space if I wanted to expand it out. I have created a video on, on a smaller version of this, how you can use this. This has got uh, banana plug connectors, so I can connect it straight to a power supply through those if I want. And in this case, I've added some extras. I've put some uh, jack plugs so that I can connect a power supply in there. These are just connected straight to V1 and V2 and then I've created another one for an output and this could be useful for connecting to a multimeter or other outputs. I'm going to start by building the blink kit which is the most basic. So the kit comes with both blink and the shrimp parts to add the extra smoothing capacitors and other the reset switch and things to make it a bit more stable but I'm going to start with the very basic the 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 blink which literally is just the 80 mega 328 
a capacitor which is used for the signaling line, a one kilo ohm resistor which is a, a pull up resistor there for the signaling, a LED and a resistor to protect the LED and that's 100 meg oh sorry 100 ohms off memory and then the uh, 16 megahertz clock signal you can run these i think on either 8 or 16 megahertz but 16 megahertz is quite standard now so i'm literally going to wire this up just on the diagram but on my bigger breadboard i'm going to put the 80 mega upside down which is the same as how it is on the arduino and uh, it just makes it uh, easier to wire up with the, the signals at the top. It comes with all the, the parts, including for the um, for the shrimp parts. So if I start with that, I'm gonna. Start by putting the 80 mega chip on. I just need to push a little of the pins a little bit together. That's it. Then this will be used for connecting to the UART, makes it a bit simpler. For capacitor, this is a I think it's 100 nanofarads. I think this is a. 10 kilo ohm actually from the uh, one zero and then four. So I'm just leaving these with the full leads on at the moment. I usually cut them down, which I might do at a later stage. Uh, 16 megahertz crystal at the position of this I'm going to actually count the number of pins yeah so that's seventh from here So for the LED, looks like the the long wire, the long normally the longest pin is the anode. That's going to go into there, and then the shorter wire goes into the row at the end, which is the cathode. And then this is a current limiting resistor, 
prevents any damage to the front. Looks like recheck those. Current limiting resistor from the cathode to ground. So before I wire that up, I'm going to double check my wiring. I'm literally just counting these pins as I go along because it's easy to make a mistake when you're wiring these. Yep, that looks okay. So it's just a case of connecting up the UART next. So these are all the, I say the spare at the moment, but we'll use these later. Data ready, DTR. Then I've used the same colors as the diagram shows to make this easier. The yellow is the transmit, which goes to the receive pin of the 18 mega and vice versa for the orange pin, which is the trans, sorry, the receive of the UART becomes the transmit of the 18 mega and then just the power cables now ground and 5 volts which connects the last two pins Now this does come with very short cable. I've, I've certainly got plenty of longer ones that I could try, but I'm just going to stick with these for this. And to program it, I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi. So I've got one here. I've got a next dock as the screen for it. And let's see, it's quite a short cable, so I'll just position the Raspberry Pi there. available port and then I can have a go at programming that. So now we've connected we can have a look at the kernel ring buffer through D message and we can see this is the CP210X converter and it's been attached to TTY USB 0 so that's the port we're going to use when we launch the Arduino IDE. So that's installed already I've covered that in another video just launch the ID it starts with an empty sketch and it, if you open the examples and the basic one is the blink so this is the most basic example which will flash an LED on pin 13 so that's the same pin used on this that's also got an LED on it on the main Arduino boards if you buy a, a normal Arduino board. So you have to choose the serial port. Uh, we've got the choice of USB 0 or TTY 0. I've been using the serial port for other things. The USB 0 is the one we've just detected. Choose a board and I think either the Uno or the Demilo Nove 18 Mega A328, that will do. We'll just use that top one. And hopefully, so if we just upload, so that will verify, compile, and upload. And fingers crossed, we should see that upload. 
and it should start flushing the LED. So it says done uploading and as you can see on the LED has started flashing and it's as simple as that so just those few basic components are enough to create a Arduino like circuit obviously there is more on the Arduino you've got the UART built into the Arduino you've got its power supply and you've got a few other things but essentially that is providing the core component of the Arduino just finish off by showing the schematic circuit diagram. I've taken the circuit that we created on the breadboard and recreated that in Fritzin and just shown it as a schematic with all the components laid out so you can get an understanding of what each thing does. I hope you found that useful. If so, please consider subscribing to my channel to get notified of future Arduino type projects that I'll create and look forward to seeing you soon.